Right now we're at the Seoul Night Market, and I'm gonna have some uh, soju and some Korean beer in some of the tents here. I heard that it's really intense. Drinking is intense. <laughs> Stop it. This is three sheets in Korea. Now, there's not a lot of pop-ups here. Sorry, this is too little. There's not a lot of pop-ups in this episode because the, the writers and the voiceover People and the editing did such a good job of really answering all the questions that you might have about the behind the scenes of it. The only thing I think is worth noting is that the toilet in my hotel room had 18 buttons on it. And I was so intimidated by it, I didn't want to break it or break myself that I didn't actually uh, use it. <laughs> Warning, in South Korea, it's rude to point at other people. Is this rude to do this? Yeah, it's rude. It's rude? Yeah. And if you're not careful, it can get you really drunk. You'll see more of that later, but first, South Korea. If you appreciate a good drinking experience, you haven't lived until you've come here to what I would consider one of the great drinking capitals of the world. Hi. Here, everyone, and I mean everyone, drinks. Thank you. They do it often. Are you ready? Uh, ready to go. In many cases, copiously. You, know, you should put some on the floor. You're not asked if you'd like a drink, you're just given a drink. Uh-oh, we should probably drink it, right? And if you don't want a drink, put it to your lips and pretend this is not a place for teetotalers. People drink a lot. This is a Korean culture. Now that's a culture I can get into, or at least I'll try. Do you drink soju? Soju? I like soju. Yeah! <laughs> Whether I'm in a small town near the tense border between north and south, or hanging out with some random dude in the streets of Seoul. Ow! Ow! Like this? I'll focus all my attention on the many nuances that define the South Korean drinking scene. From etiquette. Okay, you're gonna pour one for me. Thank you, sir. To rules. Stamina. So I drink? Oh, no. no. To out and out stamina. Oh. See if I have what it takes to go three sheets to South Korea. Yeah, yeah I'm Korean. Are you Korean? Are you? Right now we're about an hour and a half northeast of Seoul in Pocheng, and uh, the North Korean border is about 20 miles that way, where that crazy, crazy guy is who collects Daffy Duck toys. He's, he's crazy. I'm not here to get involved in the dicey politics of the region. I'm here to experience traditions that have been around much longer than the line that divides the North and South. And this restaurant is just what I'm looking for. It's called Mianji Wan in the town of Pocheon. And it's home to one of my favorite foods in the world, Korean barbecue, or bulgogi as it's called here. Accompanied, of course, with the quintessential drink of Korea, both north and south, the one uh -oh. and only soju. So it's always a good time for soju. Right? Yes. Okay. And and what is the, what's the proper way to pour, to drink? How do I do this? Uh, I show you. Okay. Uh, first open up okay. this one. Uh, and then um, I use two hands you two, you, to okay. pour. Okay. This is soju. And then also you hold up this glass. I hold my glass up? Yeah. Not left hand, always use the right hand. Okay, always right hand. And also the other hand yeah. together like this. Like this? Yes. The only time it's acceptable to pour or receive with one hand is when drinking like with close friends like who are your okay. age or when drinking okay, with people so who are below you in status, like uh, Curtis, the camera guy. Since I just met Bulgogi Dude, we observe okay. mutually respectful etiquette. Gompa, gom and remember, gombe. Gombe. Also, check this out. See how his head is slightly averted away from mine? I didn't realize this at the time, but that's also a sign of respect, often done when drinking with new acquaintances or authority figures. So what is this soju stuff anyway? Here's a little corporate propaganda, courtesy of the Jinro Soju Making Company of South Korea. The number one selling spirit in the world market, the people's liquor, Jinro. Jinro, the number one brand in the world, Jinro. 
Okay, we get it. Jinro. Jinro is the number one soju maker in the world. Wow. That's good soju. <laughs> okay. But what exactly is soju? It's actually a point of confusion. Some sources say it's made from rice. Some say sweet potatoes. Some say tapioca. But the truth behind this confusion can be found in the pages of history. Soju was traditionally made from rice. Then, during the Korean War, the government prohibited the use of rice in the making of soju because it was needed for food rations. Therefore, soju makers began using sweet potatoes and tapioca as their primary ingredients. Now that the modern day economy of South Korea is booming and rice is abundant, many premium soju makers have returned to their traditional ways and use rice as their primary ingredient. Still others use various combinations of sweet potato, rice, and tapioca. Whatever it's made of, it's delicious. And it goes great with the bulgogi, which is beef grilled over a fire right in front of us. So the smoke gets actually gets sucked back down into there, right? There's like a fan underneath. I need one of these for the, um, the sound guy. Because he smells? If we could somehow find a way to suck the smell out of him, you and I would make some money. We, we can make them here in Korea too, I don't, I don't care. Do you like some? Oh, can, I put a bone, can I put a bone on your plate? Can I bone you? Thank you. Sure. In addition to the meat, we're given an array of raw, pickled, steamed, fermented, and pureed vegetables, along with sauces, herbs, and other uh, unidentified treats. You just take what you want and put it in a bite-sized lettuce cup. Yeah, that is, peaceful meat. Mm -hmm. I, might, I might take two. Fresh garlic. Fresh garlic. Some of this uh, hot sauce, is it really hot? <laughs> Sure, I like it <laughs> a lot. As we eat our way through the beef bulgogi, an entire bottle of soju soon disappears before our eyes. No small feat since we're drinking from tiny little glasses. The last time I drank from tiny little glasses was in Japan. Come by. Bye bye. Sake and soju, both made from rice, both served in tiny little glasses but there's a definite line in the sand between them. For the record, sake is a fermented rice beverage with an alcohol content of around 15%. Soju is a fermented beverage which goes through the additional step of being distilled and then diluted with water to an alcohol content of a little over 20%. Got it? Good. There's nothing like meat and soju. There's nothing like it. It's been a nice, relaxing, and informative day in rural northern South Korea. High five. Yeah, that's right. I said northern South Korea. But I have a feeling things are gonna change for me because tomorrow I'm headed to Seoul, the capital city of South Korea. Teeming with over 10 million people, it's one of the most densely populated cities on earth. Almost everyone there drinks. And when they do it, they're friendly, creative, and in some cases, excessive. Drink it! Drink them! Tomorrow should be, well, interesting. I'm gonna slide on out of here. Thank you. Thank you. Coming up, can I speak the international language of drinking games? They have a highly developed dialect in these parts. <laughs> Oh, hello. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Pleplius.com. That's P-L-E-E-P-L-E-U-S dot com. <laughs> I'm in Seoul, the capital city of South Korea. And I'm roaming through the Nam Day Moon Night Market, which means the South Gate of Old Seoul Night Market. They call it that because, well, it's near the South Gate entrance to Old Seoul. <laughs> Here, you can get just about anything. You wanna eat it? Um, Go ahead. Um. This may be a little liquid courage talking, 
because here you can do all your shopping with an open container. Open it. Open. Are you gonna drink it with me? Yes. Okay. So uh, you know what? I didn't get your name. Your name? Ah, uh, what's your name? Ah, uh, Kevin. Kevin? Ah, uh, what's your name? Kevin. No. No. Ah, <laughs> Zane. Obviously, his Korean name is not Kevin. Thank you. May I pour yours? But it's customary among Koreans to choose a Western-style name to simplify oh, introductions to Westerners. Like, come 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 Kevin is a street vendor. He's gonna sell me some food and slug back some drinks. Yeah, we need, you know, we get a little more and then we're gonna start cooking. Korean style. Korean style. The keg cup master's recommendation, <laughs> Korean style grilled shrimp. Mm. And that means hey. roughage included. <laughs> what, really? I feel like I want to take the shell off first. I, 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 very, very good. Okay, I okay. eat with, with the shell? Yes, okay. I don't pull the shell yes, off? Yes. Is it hot? Oh, no. Oh, very, very good. It's a lot more chewable than I thought. Mm. Mm. Very, very good. Mm. Kevin doesn't miss a beat. He's hooked me up with a beer, spicy food, and, when in Korea, soju, of course. What we're gonna do is we're gonna throw this back like a couple of chums. Cheers. Cheers? Cheers. Oh, I like it. What's this? Are we married now? For the record, in Korea, interlocking arms when drinking is a sign of friendship, not marriage. Are we married? Cool. A little more super spicy food, and I'm ready to cool off my palate. Yeah. So now I'm gonna go drink. And here's, here's an issue, not necessarily a problem, but I really like soju and I really like beer, which can present a little bit of a problem because I like it so much, I'm probably gonna end up being drunk. Fucking mojo man. Fucking mojo man. High five. Before heading off to the bars, Kevin wants to show me a drink I haven't had like yet. What? All right, so where are we going? Let, it, let the record show that you grab my hand. You want to walk with me to where are we going? Let the record also show that in South Korea, it's typical for men to hold hands as a sign of friendship, not marriage. You, you open, you open the, we got to open the door. We're, is chivalry dead in Korea? Yes. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you, partner. Kevin has taken me to a shop that specializes in the sale of ginseng. This is six-year-old number one ginseng. The shop owner gets out some ginseng infused with soju. That was like a, a laboratory experiment. Apparently, it's been a long day in the shop because he's ready to cut loose. Let's do it, because we're all friends. Uh, 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 let's, uh, see, you know why I married him? Because he's so strong. Stamina <laughs> drinks. Mm. Oops. I slammed when I should have sipped. I should drink it. And around here, they sip dainty style. Get those pinkies pointed out. Nice. <laughs> My nipples got hard. I don't know if that's something that's happening to you guys. Uh, yeah, it is. Folklore has it that ginseng infused soju is good for stamina. Now, I'm not a doctor, but my self diagnosis tells me that right now, I have an urge to party. Come on. <laughs> you can only do this because he's my husband. Yes, sweet Kevin and I had a memorable experience together. We interlocked arms, held hands, and had many, many laughs. Parting is such sweet sorrow. So is it? So true. Now I must bid farewell. Mm. Good, goodbye. It's time to hit the bars! Woohoo! And Seoul has no shortage of them. Who's doing flair? You are! This is the Flare Bar, complete with fire-breathing, bottle-tossing bartenders. Thank you. You have the so much flair, I'm gonna call you Rupon the Flare. Okay, so the fire is cool, but what about this? A book for English speakers that teaches them cool party talk. I'm gonna tell you one, one thing about this place. It's Yogi Kwan Chanta, right? This Thank place you. is happening. Yeah, well, of course. Thank you. This place is happening. So the book was informative, and the bar was, well, flary. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the happening time, guys. 
but I need a change of scenery. I want to hang out with the people that are drinking drinks, not serving them. Oh my God, that's awesome. Yeah. I want to learn some Korean oh, drinking sure. games, not the Korean language. <laughs> I want to party with these guys. Oh, no. You know what we need? We need soju and we need to freshen this stuff up. Tokyo! Yeah! <laughs> They're across town in a giant restaurant bar called Zero. And they've zeroed in on me, the American dude with much to learn about partying in South Korea. Cheers. Cheers! <laughs> <laughs> Cheers! <laughs> we, we said one shot. One shot. What does that mean? One shot means one shot. Bottom up. Bottom up? Yeah. yeah. One. One shot means one bottom up. One shot. Yeah. One, one shot. One shot. One shot? Yeah. Shot. Is one that? Shot. Is English? Uh, no, I don't want to say English. <laughs> I didn't come all this way to speak English. Also, we used to speak English when we drink bottom up. Okay. Point of clarification. Even though we don't typically say this in the States, in South Korea, the English phrase, one shot, is used so frequently, it's a part of South Korean drinking vernacular. Much like the English language has adopted foreign phrases like bon voyage for have a good trip, or gesundheit for bless you. Well, unless you're in some parts of Belgium, then gesundheit can mean cheers. Uh, when you have um, a glass of uh, wine or beer, we say that. <laughs> it's a different wine. atmosphere. Yeah, gesundheit. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Wait a minute, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah, yeah, one shot. One shot. Yeah. One shot. One shot. One shot. Dangerous. Dangerous. <laughs> Little do I know it, but dangerous is an understatement. These guys are in for the long haul, and this one shot is just the beginning. There's also the beer, in this case, Kass which is usually consumed from small glasses shared from large bottles as a backer to soju. Wow, that's a good cost. <laughs> okay, professor, what's up with this stuff? Drop me some knowledge. Professor Ace. The mad scientist. Give me a beat, Zane. I want a ticket to you, old school. 5% of alcohol is what's up with this stuff. A mass-produced blogger for guys who drink tough. <laughs> A top-selling brand in the big SK, but damn hard to find in the U.S. of A. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. Back at the bar in the big SK, my new friends have something they want to show me. Pokanju? Pokanju. Pokanju is the bomb. What? Alcohol. 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 Bomb, oh, oh, alcohol. Bomb, alcohol. Alcohol bomb. Pokanju. I know, I know. We've seen various incarnations of alcohol bombs on this show. Drink it. You put the shot of the strong stuff into a glass of the weak stuff and slam. There we go. Right? Right? Actually, these guys assure me that their bomb dwarfs the destructive power of the bomb I'm thinking of. Coming up, can I survive an all-out bombing raid? We all drink. We all drink. And if I do, Will this game do me in? The game of death. The game of death! Okay. Okay. Oh, hello. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Pleplius.com. That's P-L-E-E-P-L-E-U-S dot com. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm in Seoul, okay. South Korea. And these people are about to show me their version of an alcohol bomb. I'm gonna say this properly. Am I saying it right? For this, they have me fill everyone's glass with beer. By the way, notice the customary position of the left hand under the right arm? This calls for a three sheets culturally enriching tidbit. So because of the robes that your great, great, great grandparents would wear, right? Okay. Would get in the way, they would, they would pull them back when they shake hands. So now it's polite to do this. There you have it. Now you too can make a great first impression when drinking in South Korea. <laughs> Speaking of drinking, Please. let's get back to it. I filled the beers and the soju glasses. Oh, I'm all out. Oh yeah, no I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Time to drop the bombs. 
I know what you're thinking. Put the shot glass in the beer glass and chug. That's what I thought. In fact, that's what I did. I got a little on me. But then, they showed me something way cooler. Oh, look at this. I feel like this is gonna end up in my lap. Three, two, one, zero! Hey, drink it! Drink it! That's right, ladies and gentlemen, strafe bombing. And these guys aren't done with me yet. There's still another game. The game of death. Here, they chant the game of death song. And then, they all simultaneously point while the leader calls out a number. Since the leader called out four, you follow the pointing fingers to four people. One, two, three, four. And the person who it lands on has to drink. Oh yeah, and if you're the leader, you can't call out the number one. Just two through seven in this case, because there are seven people playing. The reason you can't call out one is to prevent the leader from picking on one person without any surprises. You know what? You may think I'm the loser, <laughs> but because I have you guys as friends, I'm the winner tonight. Yeah. Oh. I'm the winner. Oh. Oh. You have sound thinking. <laughs> wow, what a group. They showed me some cool games. Oh, Those something like this. Whap! And they elevated the concept of the drink bomb to an entirely new level. In fact, I don't think my night will be complete until I try it myself. Oh! One shot! One shot! I've definitely had more than one shot. And I have a feeling tomorrow morning is gonna be rough. <laughs> Oh, 7 a.m. South Korea time. Awesome. I'm back on the streets of Seoul, looking to recover from last night's countless drinks. You know what I could use? I, I could use a little broth to chase a hangover, as they say around here. All right, so I'm sitting here with uh, Andy. Thank you. I'm sitting here with Andy who also has a little bit of a hangover. And um, this, he says this is where he comes to uh, chase the dragon. Yeah. I don't think that's the right term, but that's funny. Good. Many South Koreans believe that soup has health benefits. That sounds familiar, kind of like the way we think of chicken soup, but with a hangover twist. This, this is really for hangover cures. Yes, exactly. So it's very likely that everyone in here... Uh-huh, eating this. Wow. It's also a common belief that a good way to purge the body of toxins is through sweat. That also sounds familiar. Remember Puerto Rico? Yeah, yeah, that makes, you know, the hangover sweat. You're gonna sweat the hangover? Yeah? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it's no mystery. Whoa. I'm a big fan of the spice. I don't f around, Andy. But I like me some broth, too. <laughs> good. It's, right. it, it tastes like a regular old chicken stock. Seems normal enough. Until Andy takes me on a tour of the more hearty ingredients. That's from uh, intestines, cow intestines. What is it? Uh, cow blood. Coagulated cow blood? Yes. It's delicious. Oh, I'm sure. Before I was out, I get to thinking, the only thing they serve here is the hangover soup, which means every person in here is probably feeling exactly like I am now. If coagulated cow blood is good enough for these guys, it's good enough for me. Here's the thing. Okay. I've had cow's blood before because I've had a nice juicy steak, which has blood in it. And I've had intestine before because I've had a hot dog. <laughs> This ain't a big deal. Cow blood. With enough spice and the proper perspective, the soup goes down easy. Very hot. The spicy food-induced sweat soon follows, and I begin to feel right at home. I miss America. All right, I might be a little homesick. 
but at least I'm surrounded by kindred spirits who are just here looking for a little rejuvenation. I'm all set. <clears throat> <clears throat> It's been a great trip. I discovered the wonders of soju. There's nothing like meat and soju. There's nothing like it. Refine my Korean drinking etiquette. Watch me do that. We do this. I just pour it for you. Thank you, sir. And learn some new games. The game of death. But most importantly, I made some great friends. <laughs> what was that? Discovered the overwhelming power of a soju bombing raid. Drink it! Drink them! And slurp my way out of annihilation. South Korea, come for the booze, stay for the free hugs! Woohoo! I love you! So these are the credits right here. Look at that, it's my name. That's me, I'm the host. Okay. I'm gonna drink a lot, and then I'm gonna come back here. And you and I, we're gonna buy hats and dance and maybe get naked. Awesome. Coach, I'm heavy singer, bro. Heavy singer. You keep going, buddy. Heavy singer, heavy singer. I know, but I'm trying to see what I'm doing. In television, usually when you interview somebody, you say, Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris? Yeah. Oh, I'm not.